Hello everyone and hope you're doing super great. In this quick tutorial, I'll show you what filters are in Substance Painter, how you can create them, how you can work with them, what they do and how to manipulate them. And hopefully you have an understanding of what filters are. But before we begin, I have a little uh, sketch right here. I'm gonna use this sketch to demystify filters for you. So say you have a balloon right here and you put this balloon in a box that has spots when this balloon comes out, this balloon actually has some circular spots on it. Because you passed this balloon into a box that has spots, it'll magically change this balloon to a balloon that has spots. This uh, is a plain balloon. It, passed, it goes into a box that has stripes. And when it comes out, it has these stripes. So same goes for this one as well. This uh, balloon goes into this box that has these uh, you know, sharp edges or spikes, balloon with spikes. And then it comes out as a balloon with spikes applied to it. So what exactly is a filter and what exactly is happening right here? So uh, sp filters are special presets that target one or more channels. And basically a filter modifies your object, right? So you act actually have a filter, for instance, we're using a rust filter here. So this is the original object right here, but we want to modify this by adding a rust filter. So just by adding that rust filter, we can actually change this object. And a filter exposes what are called parameters. These parameters could be sliders, could be uh, inputs, could be floating point numbers that allow you to change the property of the material. For instance, if I'm on this rust weathering filter if i reduce the rust spread it's actually going to change how the rust is being exposed or spread on this object so if i just uh, increase that rust spreading we can begin to see that rust effect start showing up on this object it's a great way to quickly add those final effects on your painting when you're done and if you want to reduce the intensity you can always go to your layers and you could just drag down the intensity to tone or dial down the strength like so so with that being said let's just quickly go ahead and create a new project and see how we can create filters and again like i said a filter is just a preset in substance painter that changes or modifies the surface of an object. There are lots of, lots of filters and it depends on what you do. If you use an app like Snapchat, for instance, you have a filter that might make your head kind of like big, you know, those kind of funny filters, filters that draw butterflies or whatever it is. A filter is going to take the original image as an input. It's going to manipulate that object's input and then it's going to give you an output. So you have your original object without the filter applied. Now we have our object with the filters applied to it and it's changing the form of this object. So basically that's what a filter is and that's what it does. You can run away from the tutorial right now, we're done, but I just want to show you how I set this up. So I'm just going to go to file, click new, and let's just cancel this and let's just restart Substance Painter and I'll just discard this and I'll restart Substance Painter. Painter opens up and you don't have a 3D model you can import. You can start go to start painting and what Substance Painter would do is that it would create a uh, you know it, it'll load in with a default kind of like mascot. So I'll just turn off the eye uh, Turn off these few layers by turning off this eye and clicking on the eyes so I could just have the head selected. And what I'll quickly do is to go over here to the material settings and I'll set it to uh, very high to uh, like 128 sample points. If you have a low, uh, less powerful system, you can just set this to 64. It's also okay, but I'll just set this to uh, 128 sample points. And what I'll do at the texture settings is to set this to a 1K texture just so I can uh, have a little bit of more memory because I'm actually recording using Camtasia and it actually has its own, uh, it's actually consuming its own memory and uh, using part of my memory, sorry. So now that I have this object, what I'll do is to go back to the layers and let's, we can actually delete this and click on this folder icon to create a group and let's create a fill layer first. 
with the fill there, what we are going to do is to fill this object with a specific color. So if you just scroll down right here to the base color, click on this gray color and let's pick something. Let's pick some bumblebee kind of color. Yeah, I think I like this one. So with this fill there selected, what we can do is to add the filter effect. Just like I said, just like in Snapchat, let's add this filter effect. So let's click on this and go to add filter. And we actually have a filter here. It says it's empty, so we have to go to the properties. In case it's closed, you have to go to your properties and then click on filter. And let's just drag down and let's use the rust generator right there. Sorry, rust weathering. Let's click on rust weathering. So it might appear like we don't see anything here is because we need to increase the rust spreading. It's in a low value. So don't be afraid to crank this up and set this to any high value you want just to see the changes we will have on this object. So we're not getting anything. Let's just go a little bit to like 0.5 and there we can actually start to see some of those changes. I'll just drag this to like, uh, let's try point. I think a 0.49, I think this is good. This is not too bad. It's not really crazy. And you can actually see the effect we're getting right now just by applying a filter. We haven't even, you know, used the Substance Painter to its uh, best capacity. We just applied a filter and we're having a rust, rusty kind of like effect on this object. What we can do is just increase the, uh, dial down the spreading smoothness. And let's increase the damage scale and also the drips intensity. And let's reduce the sample amount. This will give it a much more kind of like crispy and realistic look like so. And basically that's what a filter does. You get high level effects. It comes with memory cost, but you can actually achieve a high level uh, effect using filters. There are a lot of filters. You can create yours and you can stack filters together. Let's go ahead and create another uh, effect stack with the filters. So I'm going to go to add filter and add this filter on top and click on filter. So what I'll do is just scroll down. I think I like this matte, you know, uh, peeling paint effect. So we're combining that first one with this one. So uh, sorry about that. Oops. So let's uh, let's click on this and click on this peeling effect. We can close this, uh, hide this one, so we can actually see what the peeling effect do. It's basically kind of like etching out those edges. And let's uh, turn on the flaking density and let's reduce the uh, peeling distance. And let's also increase the flaking uh, X just to be uh, you know, kind of like give it more flakes. And let's turn down the curvature distance as well. And let's reduce the curvature contrast. So let's turn this one back on and see what we have here. So we can actually see these two effects working together. We can also reduce the strength right here by just dialing this down a bit. We can actually see that, uh, you know, kind of like dialing down a bit. And we can also do the same thing for our rust weathering. We can also kind of like tone it down a bit, to reduce the amount like so. So basically that's how you can uh, play around with filters and you know kind of like add these filter effects to objects i don't like how this one turned out so i'll just leave it like that but basically um, have fun creating your filters and uh, hopefully this has helped you understand what filters are in substance painter thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next quick tip